Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the AE Phase 1. It's a Tier 9 American Premium Heavy Tank. It's located on the northeast spawn of Westfield under the command of Citra 01. Game on! Well, this is one of the reward tanks you get for uh, those uh, bonus coins you get for completing missions and uh, whatnot. Um, it's an interesting vehicle because it's got four sets of tracks, yes, uh, and they're not side by side, they're actually, as you can see, front and rear. And the idea was that a tank, once it had its tracks knocked off, is immobilised. But with four sets of tracks, uh, you can keep driving even if you've had your tracks knocked off one side, or even one on each side. Unfortunately though, it didn't really work. <laughs> It does have good gun depression, it's a 120mm gun, capable of 400 alpha, and with standard ammo it will do, um, what's it now, 258 with standard ammo, and with the premium rounds it will go through 340 uh, 340mm, 10 degrees of gun depression, and 15 degrees of gun elevation as well. And it's particularly good at... Uh, uh, ridge lines like this and uh, the enemy a uh, phase one that he's up against there obviously doesn't know how to use it properly because he's not taking the opportunities when he gets the chance he's already got 1200 hit points of damage and he's now extracting the rest from an emil 2 who suddenly realizes he's in grave danger now this is a tank that was devised in 1951 and it was only blueprints, it, they never actually got around to building it. They did come up with uh, several varieties, phase one was one of them, phase two was another. The benefit of this tank in World of Tanks is that of course if you do get one, you get an unlimited large repair kit. So. Even if you do get damage, you've still got the ability to keep going by punching that unlimited repair kit and it won't cost you anything to use it. Of course, it will go on cooldown, but uh, it means you're not going to pay anything for it. A nice shot into the E75. He opted to go for the turret rather than actually going for the engine bay. I'm not sure why he did that. I think it may have been that he wanted to get uh, the ammo rack rather than the uh, engine fire. Now as you know Citra 01 is very big on getting his tanks marked, he's got two on this one already and he's working his way up, he's building up his, uh, his damage each game, ok we've got an enemy looking the other way, takes a round straight through the back of the turret, managed to avoid getting hit by that E75, thinking about going for the uh, engine bay there but the E75's gone. Oh, Tortoise comes into sight, so he puts it straight through the, the turret, the cupola, which is the weak spot. But the, the Tortoise keeps turning towards us, even though he's looking at our teammates. So the E100 takes the round through the side of the turret, and now he's got the side of the Tortoise, which means he can hit it in the weak spot and take it out. No, I think he's going to get behind him. He's using the heat rounds to punch through. Now he's behind it, he could have used his standard. In fact, he selected his standard for his next shot because he now knows he can easily penetrate this without using the heat. And no problem, engine fire. No, he just blew the thing to pieces. So he's got two kills now and he's racked up 5.3K of damage. Next one's gonna be the M103. Oh, he hit him in the tracks. He only tracked him that time. Oh, he's got to think about this. There's an STB-1 on the other side, and he's got a 105mm gun. Yeah, you need to get clear of this guy, because he's got a wicked rate of fire. And we've already taken a, a massive hit from him with a heat round. Yeah, he's decided to get round the other side. The STB is running away, presumably because he realises now that he's lost, or this area is lost, and he's the last defender. Okay, there's a... Oh, no, there is a Yagtiger hiding. 
Didn't get that one in. Okay, he's loading his last heat round. Oh, Artie! Just got stunned. Lost... Oh, got some splash as well. 88 hit points of splash. Okay, there's the Yank Tiger. He couldn't see the outline, but he did punch it in. I don't think he got it through, though. 490. Yeah, that building was probably in the way when he fired. That's why he couldn't see the outline. Lower plate with standard ammo, and it went through. High roll, 407. Go for it again. Yep, and he gets the kill this time. So he's got his third kill. And he's also got 20% of the enemy hit pool. 5.8k means he's on for a high caliber. And he's keeping his damage rate high so he can get that third mark. Okay, that's ruins that you can't knock over. I've often opted that the Wargaming ought to make all the ruins on the map destructible. Or all the buildings destructible as well. But some would be more destructible than others. So, you know, the soft buildings that just collapse and then other buildings which would collapse on you if you tried to drive through them. But that's more in keeping with reality. We also ought to have it so that buildings could be knocked down using HE rounds from Artie. Oh, and Artie smacks us for 150 and it's a bat chat 155.58 so he's probably got two more rounds ready. So we've been hit by one and there's the second one that was more direct. 218 hit points. The STB came back for some more. Thinking we were stunned and vulnerable. And the third shot from the bat chat finishes us off. That was sad. We're one up on the enemy. But I think that uh, they have done enough. Because it's almost... Well, it's not quite double the n number of hit points than the enemy. But I think he's given them a very good chance, his team, to win this. No, by no means guaranteed. You can see Citroen's uh, cycling through the various uh, teammates to try and see what's uh, what's happening in the battle. This is where most of the action is actually ha happening. There's only one up on the enemy at the moment. That EBR is being a bit of a pain. Two tanks trying to take him down, and the RT takes another kill. This time the Progetto 65. So he's obviously a very good RT player. Getting lots of direct hits. Okay, let's see how he copes with the Tortoise. Tortoise is going to try and come in behind that STB-1, who's been a pain in the rear because he's actually quite a good player he knows when to run and hide and when to uh, stand and fight and get the ground on his favor but now he's got the a phase one up there on the cliff uh, top and the tortoise is coming in behind him he's using citron's wreck i think there to cover him but meanwhile our object 140 is now free to snipe across the valley I think he's just finding it very very difficult well it was the object 140 who got the sniping shot that took out the enemy stb and now it's just to find the last enemy which is the batch at 155 58 and he just fired a round in from across the way and we're now just waiting for the object 140 to find the last one we've been spotted so he must be down in the dip oh no he's not he's actually in the tree line and just got wiped out by the tortoise with a blind shot here's the end of battle results to that one and it's an ace tanker for citron zero one in the ae phase one he managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits in fact he managed to get seven Got a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points to his own vehicle. A confederate for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. At least six tanks subsequently taken out by other teammates. And he did get the high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game. Even though he actually went down to the bat chat 155.58 at the end. Let's have a look at the team score. Well there you are. Right at the top of the table with 6,588 hit points. The next high scorer 
had less than half of that, and that was the STB1. 3,024 went to him, and 2,941 went to the Object 140, who was obviously fighting on the uh, medium line, going round the outside of the map, on the other side of the map. Uh, he got 2,941 hit points. When it came to kills, it was actually the EPR-105 on the enemy team did the best with four kills. Three kills went to the Object 140, the Tortoise, and Citrus 01. And uh, two kills went to the AE Phase 1, uh, the other AE Phase 1, who did survive the battle. Uh, and also the Batchap 155-58, the STB, and the Spa Panzer 251 on the enemy team. When it came to base XP, it was Citrus 01. Yes, so getting that high caliber really helped. 1,491 to him. 1,084 went to the other A Phase 1. 930 went to the IS-32. Citroen fired 24 rounds in that game. Every round hit the target, but only 18 of them actually penetrated. He did fire a couple of rounds which actually got uh, uh, tracking shots or um, uh, just didn't uh, penetrate. 6,588 hit points of damage, all of it done at close range. Six hits received from the enemy, three penetrations, one non-penetration, and five hits by enemy RT or heat rounds, uh, or HE rounds rather. And it was it was the bat chat in the end. Yes, he was um, extracting large amounts of hit points, probably actually more than his the opposite tanks. Uh, and he was so he was very accurate with that those 155 millimeter rounds. 490 hit points of damage blocked by armor. He spotted one enemy vehicle, damaged nine of the enemy, killed three, so there's where he got the Confederate, and 195 hit points of damage assistance. 59,400 credits from the game, 26,730 from personal missions payout, and after repair, ammunition, resupply, and consumable, and even though he fired a fair amount of heat rounds in that battle, he still made a profit. 3,497, not very much, but it is a profit nonetheless. 1,491 XP, 112 for this being a premium vehicle because it's one you actually earn from bonus coins and everything like that. You don't get as much as you do if you actually pay for one. 2,349 experience points altogether. So this this thing, as he says, when hull down is a thing, uh, it really is a quite a good tank for hull down fighting. And uh, it, it, the thing is that it does have a fairly weak hull when it comes to armor. So you have to be very careful. And those four tracks, well, they're really more cosmetic than anything. In fact, they do allow you to get tracked more than once uh, because you can get hit in either track or uh, uh, if you're not careful, you could find out that you've got to wait for the, for the tracks to repair on both sides. Uh, yes, it can be a bit inconvenient, this, uh, this tank sometimes when it comes to the tracks, but that's why they give you that large repair kit. Okay, let's have a look at the second battle in this tank. The second battle is on the Harkov map and we're still in the AE phase one. Off we go. Uh, you can clearly see those two marks of excellence on the barrel. Yeah, the hull's fairly weak on armor. But uh, this tank does have fairly good agility, very decent pen of course, and uh, very well sloped armour. The turrets are uh, obviously cast, as you can see that. Again, that helps. Oh, he's not the only one who went here. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, sometimes good players go to the same spot every time. They're anticipating the enemy's going to go driving past that gap on their way to the corner. Yeah. Well, one of the enemy did, and it's an AE Phase 1, went straight across without getting spotted, and there's a Waffentrager as well, sitting on the corner backing him up. Now, the question is, is he, uh, no, he didn't come around the corner because it's an E50M stopping him from doing that. 
No, be careful when you go across this gap because there are enemy tanks to your left. Yep, okay, we're safe there. Sometimes they can sit there on the sniping roll. Now we've got the Waffentrager. Now he's got no armor. 529 fired an HE round in and he took the brunt of it. Now these HE rounds, let's have a look and see how much they will do. 515 Alpha, so he got a high roll there. Fires one at the uh, at the Lurva, 326 damage. It's loading the heat now. Well, no, that didn't work, and he actually took a round from the back from the E50M, who's definitely trying to troll him by pushing him out of the way so he can get the corner to himself. So Citroen 01 has decided he'll pull back. Trying to get a shot there, but he's obviously blocking the uh, Jaegeru behind him. I'm not so sure the Jaegeru is worried. In fact, actually, he blocked shots from the A Phase 1 on the enemy team and the Lurva. And the E50 is now being a complete and utter pain. Because he's just blocking the other two guys from doing their job properly. Well, I'm not sure what Citroen's intending to do now. I think he thinks that both of these players... Well, not both of them. Just the Jaeger didn't do anything wrong. But the E50M definitely did something wrong. You should have seen that there was a better player. And there you go. He started on his, his routine now. You can see those rounds he took. And he was very lucky that he didn't... Uh, he blocked them because they bounced off the angled armor. As I said, the hull on this tank is not very strong. It's fairly weak. Gets the lower plate on the Lerva. Low roll though, 399. Only just the low roll though. And now the Lerva's in trouble. 378. This high penetration gun is now going to tear this Lerva apart. One more shot to kill. Oh no, he didn't. He got a low roll. I was hoping he'd get a high roll and put that guy out of the game. But he's got one more shot to fire to kill that guy. Now the weapon trigger's up here somewhere. There you go. Go back to the garage. Now he ought to load uh, an HE round now, right now because I think that. Uh... Oh, here's the Wacker Trigger. One shot for him, and he's out the game as well. I was hoping he was going to load an HE for him, but he didn't. Of course, Wacker Trigger's got virtually no armor whatsoever. He's selected another heat round, and he's getting hits. Renudo's 15 16, who can see him from the hill because he's close to this object 416, who takes one shot, and he's out the game. Okay, there's the Udes 1516, who probably can't see him now. And he takes one through the side, and he's out the game. There's only three enemies left now. And although he's capping, he's not sticking around. He wants more damage. He needs more damage to get his third mark. Batch at 12 times on the move. No, didn't get that one. He's loaded the standard ammo now, because uh, obviously these guys have got weak armor. Even the strip 1030, he's only got the 30 millimeters, but it's well angled. Here we go. One in on him. High roll, 465. He's tracked. The light LT432 goes for the ram kill. And that is the end of the game. And guns up. He's happy. Well, here's the end of battle results. And that was the third mark game for Citroen 01 in the AE Phase 1. And a second class tanker from that game. Um, he only got a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle. I think really his uh, usual rhythm was blocked by that E5000, uh, E50 Alcerung M rubber. Who kind of got in the way and stopped him from getting into his normal sequence of blasting those rounds into the enemy. Um, so it kind of interrupted his flow. But uh, even so he still managed to get three kills in the game. And I think he had a bit of fun in it uh, because towards the end you could tell that he, he knew that that was enough damage to actually get him the next mark. He obviously Citroen 01 probably uses one of those trackers which most of us do use by now. A little mod that actually tells you how much damage you need to go do if you're going to get your third mark. Well he certainly got it on this battle. Let's have a look at team score and see where he is. Well... He actually did get the highest damage in the game, but he didn't get 20% of the enemy hit pool, and that's why he didn't pick up the high caliber. 
Yeah, he did receive shells from other teammates during that game, actually. He got actually hit in the back by the uh, E50M. And uh, he did receive some rounds from the enemy, which bounced off, luckily. But, uh, yes, he did get the highest damage, 3,914. The second highest damage went to the Cranvon, 3,840. And the third highest damage went to the Conqueror on his team with 2,986. That uh, E50 Alstrong M didn't do much damage. He wasn't an experienced player and basically he was blocking the most experienced player on the team, I'm afraid, in that game. When it came to kills, it was the Emil 2 did the best with four kills, but Citroen 01 had second spot with three kills. Two kills went to the Camp Panzer 50, was it 07 RH rather? Um, I thought for a second that was going to be the Camp Panzer 50. But no, it's uh, 07RH, and nobody on the enemy team managed to get more than one kill. Thankfully, none of those were over on our side of the battlefield. They were obviously elsewhere, fighting it out in amongst the houses. When it came to base XP, it's Citroen 01. He got the most. In fact, he's the only player to get over 1,000, with 1,038. Second highest was the Cranbon, 921. Third highest was the Emil 2 with 915. He fired 15 rounds in that game, 13 direct hits and 11 penetrations. Damage of 3,914 hit points, of which 407 were at more than 300 meters. That was the long range shot that he fired, I think, at the Udes. Uh, three hits received from the enemy, all non-penetrations. Very lucky that they, because they hit the hull. But of course, as I said, the hull's very well angled, which means that if you hit the right spot, then it will bounce off. But the hull is very weak armor, so you really don't want to get hit in the hull on an AE Phase 1 if you can help it. Just let them fire at the turret to go hull down or fight over a bit of rubble. He blocked 1,160 hit points of damage. Six enemy vehicles were damaged, three were killed, and he earned 38,482 credits from the game, 17,317 from personal missions payout, and after re resupply of ammunition and consumables, uh, he still made a profit on this one. Even though he fired heat rounds, he still ended up with 5,900 credits. And you notice the way he used the ammunition. He knew which one to select. He deliberately did that. He wasn't wasting am ammo. He wasn't spamming it at everyone. He was selecting the right round for the right target. And it was working. 1,038 XP. 78 for this being a premium vehicle. Took away 1,635 experience points altogether. But the best thing he took away from this battle is he took away his third mark. Which obviously stays on the end of his barrel now uh, forevermore. And let some people know that yes you shouldn't interrupt what he's doing. Don't get in his way. Let him do his thing. Because this is one of those players where if you let him do his thing. You're more than likely going to win the game. Because he's literally going to tear the enemy to shreds. Yes, whenever you come across somebody with a third mark, they obviously know what they're doing. Or they're spamming a lot of gold at the enemy. Because <laughs> I know that certain other players of what our teenibs do have third marks, even though they spam gold like it's going out of fashion. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And please do stick around because we've got another series of, uh, or a couple of uh, videos from uh, Citroen 01. Yes, he's been out in another tank recently and sent us in the replays. So uh, we've got another dual header coming up soon. Thanks for watching.